Hi, welcome to my happy place. Today I want to show you a quick and easy quilt. Now today is December 5th, 2023, and you can easily have this quilt done as a Christmas gift if you want. Um, the pattern is free. It's on Northcott Fabrics website. I believe that's www.northcott, N-O-R-T-H-C-O-T-T dot com. It's called the Construction Zone. This pattern actually has a couple different names to it. What I did with this, simply because it is uh, one of those things that I needed to kind of hurry up and make. So instead of putting the whole top together, I have broken it out into a quilt as you go. So here is one block. The blocks I put together, I started at around 11 o'clock in the morning and by about, well by dinner time it was, all the blocks were put together. It was done as far as, as getting that far. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a little bit on how I'm going to quilt this to make it relatively quick and easy. If you're a free motion quilter, this is just going to be a total piece of cake for you. If you're a beginner free motion quilter, you can do this just as well. That's what makes this nice. Remember, free motion is just basically moving the quilt sandwich around under your needle. And I know you can do this. So what we need to do first is obviously get our blocks together. Cutting instructions, very clear, easy to understand. Now, what I did not do is I did not do the, I'm not, I'm not going to do the outer border just simply because of time constraints. I am not going to do the sashing exactly the way the sash is done between the blocks themselves. Within the blocks themselves, the two inch by 15 and a half inch strips, and we need 10 of those, five strips that are cut two inches by eight inches. And I will show you where these are going to go. The two inches by 15 and a half inches are going to go here, and the two by eight are going to go here. You'll build this and then put on this sashing and then put on the larger outer piece. So I'm going to grab my 12 inch arc here and I'm going to show you how, first off, I got to back up, I'm sorry. I have my backing fabric here and this is another thing that I really, really like about Quilt As You Go. I can use up my scraps of fabric, fabric that's left over and I don't have to piece it most times. If I was making this into a complete quilt before quilting it, I would then go in, take all my, my leftovers from the um, cutting process, and I would try to put them together in some kind of appealing manner anyway to um, make the back of the quilt. And of course, add any fabric that I need to add because I was short. So doing it this way is so much easier. I absolutely love it. And the question I get asked is, well, can you piece these fabrics on the back of your blocks as well? Absolutely you can. You could do anything you want. This is your quilt. <laughs> and you know, um, I, I do like to do that. With free motion, it's not, uh, not too difficult to do. To stitch over uh, when you're doing ruler work, of course, and free motion. You do want to keep these joins um, on, on your intersections as flat as possible. To do that, there's a couple of different ways we can. One is to steam it good and use a mallet and just pound the living daylights out of it or to use one of these new wooden clappers and a wool mat. And that's my preference, quite honestly. 
unless of course I'm a little frustrated with the project, then I'll go get my mallet out. I will caution you though, however, don't use a black mallet. They come in a grayish color, a light gray color, and I do use that color as well. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at things. I'm going to make an adjustment on my camera and then we'll be right back. Okay, we have made an adjustment here. Want to be sure that I've got you in perfectly. Now, many of you who know me know that I'm not a fast quilter. I take my time when I'm stitching. And I think the reason I do that is because I just simply enjoy it. What I'm going to do on this, and I'm going to tell you that this really is not absolutely necessary. Um, I like to do this, I go around the perimeter of the block for two reasons. One is because I know my block is going to shrimp shrink up a little bit as I quilt it. And by doing the perimeter, I am testing my um, stitch integrity. And I am also going to stop my fabric from bubbling up. You don't need to tie this off. It's going to be buried. No one's going to see it. You can do it in shorter stitches or you can do it in really long stitches. It's entirely up to you. I kind of go with a medium stitch length. And I'm just literally going to go all the way around the block and I am outside of my quarter inch seam allowance here. Just so you're aware. So my quarter inch seam allowance is here. I'm going to stitch in this area. I don't want this to show on the finished product. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't even need to be good. <laughs> I'm just going to hold us in place here as we go. Because we are going to be putting quite a bit of stitching on here, although you don't need to, you can make this as open and as loose as you want. Speaking of loose, my foot just came loose. Love my 301. I'm using a Singer 301 a vintage 50s machine. And although I love this machine very much, because it is all mechanical, the foot does tend to vibrate loose. I don't know if it's universal on all 301s, but the two 301s that I sew on both do have that minor issue. And believe me, I do believe it's minor. Not worth trading machines over. I love the vintage machines the fact that we control everything on them. With that being said, you also are going to want to make sure that you clean and oil your vintage machines. They do need to be oiled. And just another housekeeping um, note is you want to change your needle often, at least every eight hours of stitching. I like to change mine almost daily when I'm doing a big project. It just keeps everything working nicely. Also, don't forget to use a needle that actually coordinates with the type of stitching you're doing. Okay. And I won't go into all of them, but for example, if I'm using a 12 weight specialty thread, I will use a size 18 top stitch needle or a size 16 top stitch needle, simply because the eyes of those needles are a little bigger than the rest of them. And they will accommodate that thread with less damage to it. In other words, not a lot of shredding. Yeah, I'm kind of getting out of the way here. There we go. Just brought it back to the beginning. Now, 
where I'm going to start is I'm going to start on the sashing. And I am using my ruler foot. If you are using your free motion hopping foot, you'll probably want to just use your eyes and see where you're at. But because I'm using my westerly ruler foot, I know that my needle is exactly one quarter of an inch inside of the perimeter of this foot no matter where I stitch. Makes it very easy. So I'm going to lay my ruler down. Let's get those threads up. I'm going to lay my, my ruler down and ride my, my foot right across the edge of this template. And in doing so, I know that I am a quarter of an inch away from the seam. And if you don't want to be exactly that way, or say you don't want to do free motion, you may want to stitch this in with a walking foot, and that's fine too. Pick your, you know, pick your site and keep everything straight. Okay, I do like to take that one stitch in place. Okay, and I do need to adjust my foot again. And that doesn't take much. I just, oh, I didn't get it adjusted quite well enough. What's happening here is the fabric is doing what we call snow plowing. It's pushing the fabric forward as we stitch. And there, we've got that problem solved. Now, what we want is we want that foot to literally kiss the top of the fabric. We don't want it pushing down on the fabric and we don't want it off of the fabric. If you push it down, you're going to get what you just saw happen here, which is called snow plowing. And if it snow plows long enough, you're going to end up with a little crease or pleat in your fabric. If your foot is too high, you're going to end up with skipped stitches and nobody wants that. Okay, so I've got one side of the sashing done. I'm going to stitch over to the other side. You'll see how nice that looks. Just really nice and clean. And we're going to come this way. And I'm going to stop when the outer portion of my foot touches the seam because I know that foot, that needle, I'm sorry, that needle is a quarter of an inch away from that spot. Now, one of the things about the older machines also is a lot of times we do need to adjust that needle position. Okay, and I'm accustomed to that, so that doesn't bother me at all. So now we're going to come down. Notice I'm holding my template with my right hand and my left thumb. And the reason I like to do that is so that I'm not pushing the ruler in with my right hand and I'm not pushing it out with my thumb. But because I have them in opposite directions, if I start to push either way, the thumb will stop it from being pushed any further than it should be. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we keep our ruler steady. And so I've got staple tape on the back and I'm ready to go. The other thing that I do is I like to make sure that I'm stitching where I have good control over the template and my fabric. For example, if I come down here and my hands are up here, I have lost control. If I come down and hold it like this and my machine being up there, and let me do it this way, 
I still, I have no control. That template moves way too easily. So I'm just going to hold everything in place. I call it my magic triangle is where I have most control. Now I can, however, move my hands down without moving the template and get a little further. When we stop, we always want to stop with our needle in the down position. Okay. Remember to try and keep your stitch length consistent. And I say consistent because it doesn't matter if you like a little longer stitch length or if you like a little shorter stitch length. Use the stitch length you're comfortable with. The key is pick that stitch length and use that length everywhere. And it will bring a great deal of cohesion to your blocks and your quilting. Okay, so now you can see, I'm going to get you in a little closer here, how beautiful these stitches look, how everything is nice in place, nothing is puckered up at all. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to bore you with make, doing the same exact things on these two sashings. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to show you in the next video some really easy free motion stitching. So until then, let's quilt.